Alright, I have reached the Cemetery of the Forsaken. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, it's interesting that this game uh, forgoes the usual uh, fantasy hack and slash RPG tropes of immediately dumping you into some variety of sewer, fighting either goblins, rats, or goblins and rats, or goblins with pet rats who ride spiders. Yeah. Um, I actually had <laughs> something I was going to say earlier, but I'm like, eh, I've been quiet for a while, I'm just going to leave this part that's boring combat and cut it out later, and now I can't remember what I was going to say. But uh, I do kind of like the, the color-coded enemies, you know, it seems like, why would you just make a bright skeleton, can't you just have something different for the area? But no, I mean, sometimes it's kind of hard. In a game like this, I assume there's eventually going to be crazy types of demons and creatures and who knows what. So, I mean, if, if they want to save time that would otherwise be spent making enemy variety to simply work on other things and, you know, for boss monsters, just make them slightly larger and glowy, I'm good with that. They're larger and glowy. It's immediately obvious that they are magical and something that you need to kill quickly. Or in certain cases, save to the end. There are bosses that you are usually better off doing that with. Uh, let me go activate this teleport thingy. Current location. Alright. Yeah, actually, uh, I would say this kind of game is pretty much one of my favorite kinds of games of all time. Ha these, like, top-down hack and slashes. Actually, out of curiosity, can you... Oops, nope, you cannot turn the screen. It is fixed. Fixed view. Um, when I was uh, younger, we played a game called Darkstone, which actually just recently released on good old games, and I instantly bought it because, oh my god, nostalgia. But yeah, it's one of these kind of top-down hack and slash dungeon crawlers where it was all completely randomized every time. Everywhere but the main town you started in was completely different each time. Oh geez. Uh, and I had a ton of fun playing that co-op with, uh, with my sister. And then after that, when we got our PS2, we found uh, the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance games, which were essentially the same thing on a console, which worked actually incredibly well. That led us to Champions of Norath, which is, I think, my favorite PS2 game of all time. Uh, it's four-player co-op in a hack-and-slashy way. It's set in the EverQuest game... Uh, universe, but I actually was never a player of EverQuest before that point, so I knew nothing about that. Um, and it's just, you know, one big long quest, and in the sequel you actually could choose whether you were good or evil, which is kind of cool. But, uh, yeah, uh, just a huge adventure. Four players, you could choose all sorts of different classes. Uh, and it actually led to several, like, long-running, still, still standing in-jokes in our family. For example, Kylie, uh, who I spent in a few videos. I actually can't... Oh, she was in her Borderlands video, though. She, uh, would often say, that's why I'm the cleric, whenever, you know, you almost die, and suddenly, poof, she saved you. She threw a, threw up a spell, and was like, whew, good job, glad you were there. That's why I'm the cleric. You die, she runs away, comes back, resurrects you, and you continue on. That's why I'm the cleric. Buys a million health potions. That's why I'm the cleric. Has every single bit of mana. That would be why she was a cleric. And so, every time now something involving healing comes up, or she does something that no one's gonna do, that's why you're the cleric! Yep, that's why you're the cleric. And, uh, <laughs> first time we ever got her to play D&D, &D, we were like, no, we know what you have to be. Well, I was thinking I might- no, you're a cleric. Okay. So, first time we played D&D, &D, she was a cleric. And she spent the entire time purposely not healing people, just to piss them off. It was actually amazing. Uh, I think that was the same session where Amos had his character fall into a pit that had a uh, gelatinous cube at the bottom, and uh, he was instantly killed. So that was a, that was a fun game. Uh, I think we got a new lower. Let me go listen to that. Do -do -do. That would be here. There we go. What did I get? Imp. Oh wait, hang on. Ghost. The tragedies in these lands have left many restless spirits in their wake, and they demand retribution. 
These spirits will take out their vengeance on any unsuspecting individual who may pass, for they believe that the blood of the living will yet restore the lives that were ripped away from them. Demons have been known to devour their own young when no other nourishment is available. Their offspring, the imps, sometimes manage to flee and band together with other demon spawn. They rove in vicious packs, ready to descend upon the unwary traveler and rip his body to shreds with their tiny needle-sharp teeth. <laughs> so we have encountered our first legitimate demon-type creature. Imps. Kinda underwhelming. But, you know, imps up make up the uh, the backbone of any good inferno town. Gotta have hundreds and hundreds of them. These seem to be the uh, replacement for goblins, which is a shame. I was hoping for something a little more imaginative, maybe something fiery. But, you know, it's it's fantasy. You gotta, you gotta start small. You can't immediately be going off killing umber hulks and uh, enter caps. Gotta start with the boring creatures first. Well, I'm glad I can hear bones. That sounds like an important skill. What? Oh god! What the hell? Shoot faster! Well, oh, you know, this guy was not that hard. The unburied are formed from human corpses that were flung into mass graves without a proper burial. This hideous amalgamation of bodies decomposes together into one being, bound by some foul magic. For all my knowledge, I could only flee from it, and I would expect any other sensible person to do the same. As would I. Luckily, I am not sensible. What is this? Oh, interesting. This has a bonus to strength, and somehow strength gives me protection. Unless swords just by default give protection because they assume you can parry with them. Who knows? I suppose uh, we'll never find out. Moving on. Whoa. Well, that was a fail shot. Oh, we have a, uh, I have a healer in this group. Yeah, resurrect those, asshole! <laughs> Sixteen monsters killed. How many of those do you want to bet were, uh... Resurrected versions of the previous ones. Oh, interesting. So, must be near uh, the exit. Because they're giving us a way to get back to the entrance. Sup? Uh, no, find the healer first. Yes, my spirit grows fast. Really needs to go on a diet. Horrify. Alright, let's see what that's under. Ah, secondary. Oh, no, no, I got to... Increases the amount of enemies... Oh, the amount enemies are slowed. Okay. Horrify. Channels the horrors of the own farmland frighten nearby enemies. I don't think I'll like this as much, but, uh... As per what I've been going with, try every new ability at least once. No, I will not allow you to bring that monster Leoric back to this world. Didn't eat bats. I don't know what he's hitting me with, but it's not doing enough damage. And now you're dead. Carrying capacity is limited. Oh, and I am nearing the end of my carrying capacity. 
Uh, less damage, so not worth it. Melee attackers take one damage per hit. Ooh, so it's one of those, like, uh, you know, shields that bounce things back, which is kind of what it says it is. Health globes grant 28 life. Oh, 28 more life. Oh, that's kind of handy. That's sort of thing that would be better, uh, better used for an actual defender, though. Quest complete. Town portal. Oh, so I have gained town portal. So, yes, the most useful ability in any one of these games. The ability to go back to town, sell things, and return exactly where you were. <laughs> Extremely cheap when you use it in the middle of a fight. Ah, screw it, let's do it now. Ah, there is a channel time, so doing it in the middle of a fight would not be recommended. Oh, I keep forgetting that's not move. You found a crown. You told I didn't think you'd make it back alive. Ah, it needs repair. Should be no problem. Repair? How do you expect to re how do you expect to repair a <laughs> a crown by hammering it like that? Hey, he prefers African American king. Did I did I kill him at any point? I guess I must have found him. Gained access to the blacksmith artisan. Can now forge new armor and weapons. Can also salvage unwanted items. Excellent. So salvaging. Salvage. Click the anvil to begin salvaging. Left click on items I don't want. I believe I don't want any of this. Uh, actually, save that. I'm gonna keep that. But yeah, let's do this. Cannot salvage. Ah, I can't salvage non-magical items. So wait, is this what I got? Okay. Oh, it's by using the boss to salvage. Okay. So turns into crafting materials, so if I were to get a crappy crossbow, plus two random magical properties, okay. Now let's go, what do I have? Oh god, yes, this is going to be much better than what I have. Sure. Superior craftsmanship. Plus five dexterity, monsters grand X experience. Perfect. Oh wait, well, what does it look like? I can't tell. Oopsies. Yeah, I can't really tell what it looks like. Oh well, it looks like a giant tooth. Boots. Well, let's see, hang on. Forge weapons. If I were going to forge a crossbow... Oh, I already used too much. Alright. Boots it is, then. Dang, those are nice boots. And training. Train the blacksmith to increase experience, learn recipes, and level up. Sure. Apprentice heater, shield, and hide gloves. Ooh, hide breaches. Damn it! Okay, let's salvage some things. <laughs> I love crafting systems. My pants suck right now, right? Yep. Sweet, so this is this is a good alternative to looting. You can actually get some very nice stuff. Oops, requires level 9. But it is 8 vitality, 7% extra gold from monsters, and regenerates life per second. That's nice. That is very nice. And I got boots already, and the cuffs. Okay. Don't need 4. 4. Don't have right now. Can't get any new items. Okay, so... Oh, Jesus. Ugh, I need to remember that. Okay, let's go sell my other crap. Let's uh, reshuffle this around a bit. And in fact, let us uh, hop into the stash. There we go. And now Deckard King. 
directly now to the Lost King. At last. With it, you can unlock the sealed door in the room where you rescued me and enter the royal crypts. When you find the Skeleton King, place the crown atop his head and destroy him. Alright, I shall destroy him. Put an end to it and find the star. Alright. Oh, and it tells you where to go. That is nice. That is very helpful. I was going to figure it out, I'm sure, eventually, but, you know, I really appreciate the effort. And no reason not to check these signs. Eh, nothing. Oh well. Damn. Not nearly as breakable as certain other places. So. The giant door. Let's do this. And it's one hell of a convoluted door. Oh, whoa, whoa. was there a skeleton in the barrel? What the hell? Why? Oh. Well, apparently, uh... Apparently that is the end of our session here, because, uh... Either I've lost internet connection, or they're just having some weird issues, uh... Some very strange issues in the server. Well, that is a shame. Uh, well, at some point, when I can figure out what's going on, I will uh, bring you the rest of this. But so far, thanks for watching.